Good evening, everybody. It is Wednesday night here at Beyond the Airwaves, leveling up. In other words, it's hump day. Mike, 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 Mike. Sorry, Mike. I have to do Maybe that. <laughs> you probably used. You probably been having to do that too, right? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, since it's Wednesday, except for Warzone Wednesday, that means we got stories that'll make you laugh, think, cry, and get upset. Which means ever so often we'll have a supernova rant rocket, and we do have a couple stories that are supernova rant rocket worthy. So anyway, I'm your host for tonight. I am Oddball Stream. I'm currently joined alone by three of my crazy cohorts. First. To my bottom left is our master and creator off camera because he's cooking. Frodo. Hello, Frodo. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I can still hear y'all. Mm -hmm. And when we get really started, I do want to start off with something kind of funny from Washington. Okay, sure thing. All right. Does it involve a former commander in chief? No. Yeah, well, we'll talk. Well, we'll... yes and no. Okay. All right, first, and then also to my immediate left, we have our Miss Irish Coffee, Janet. Hello, Janet. Hello, although although my coffee flavor is not Irish coffee first thing in the morning, it is sugar cookie. Ah. She and needs, she, we need to get her some whiskey. <laughs> no, thank you. I puke my guts out. Let's see. And finally, below me, we have our resident joker, Mike. Hello, Mike. Evening, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Yeah, Based and on our, what I've heard, uh, John may not be on the show tonight. No, I think he said that last night. So yeah, he mentioned it last night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something going on with with his church. So right, so that's cool. All right. Anyway, let's start off with some Washington news that'll make everyone kind of chuckle. So, Kevin McCarthy. You know how Pelosi is trying to do a whole uh, committee January 6th on January six, yeah. Mm -hmm. So McCarthy decided it was a good idea to put one of the people who has been a constant naysayer of the January sixth attacks. He actually, she actually, he actually tried putting two in, mm -hmm. and Pelosi was like, ah, "You're mm -hmm. funny." I don't think so. <laughs> yep. So, Pelosi had the right to reject them. Yep. So. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I heard about that. It's like she's trying to, you know, they're trying to make a nonpartisan commission on January 6th. But Kevin McCarthy was trying to put a couple in there. And Nancy <laughs> said, I don't think so. <laughs> That's in her right. Mm-hmm. That was part of the rule. So far, the only, I think the only Republican that's in so far is Liz Cheney. I but think I think... Cheney. I think Cheney's shown that she's got a level head. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I just found that kind of funny today. Can I read something that, um, real quick, and then we'll get started on our subject matter. It uh -huh. seems that the new generation of Space Jam is not being received very well by the old school. Can I read this real quick? Yeah, go ahead. I'm not. I'm. I'm not surprised by that. Oh, oh. Well, listen. I haven't seen it, so I can't formulate my own opinion. But the old Space Jam director's comments on new movie going viral, and I will put this in the Zoom chat. And I'll put in all the others. Somehow, somehow I'm not surprised by that either. But I'm one of those people where I can enjoy both if I want to, you know? Ah, oh, there's Lala in the chat. 
Hey, Lala. Okay, let's just hope I got that whole um, whole link in there. But here it is. Old Space Jam director's comments on new movie going viral. The long-awaited sequel to Space Jam, as Space Jam A New Legacy, starring LeBron James, dropped into theaters last Friday, the film debuted atop the box office, earning roughly $31.7 million domestically, as fans flocked to see what would follow the iconic first movie. However, A New Legacy was met with fairly harsh reviews. Among the critics that bashed LeBron in the new movie was Joe, I'm not sure if that's Pitka or Pitka. Oh, Pitka. Joe Pitka, the director of the franchise's first film. Pitka listed a whole host of complaints with the most notable critique centering around the L Los Angeles Lakers star. Here's more from Vanity Fair. According to a new TMZ report, Pike Pitka has several issues with the long awaited follow up, including its soundtrack and supporting cast. The filmmaker apparently told the outlet that he watched Space Jam, a new legacy, over five separate occasions as it was too dull to complete at once. Pitka also referred to the film oh. soundtrack. What? It's too dull to complete at one sitting? Evidently oh. so, according to him. Well. Pitka also referred to the film soundtrack as insignificant, a sentiment he shared about the sequel's roster of NBA players, including Anthony Davis and Damian Lillard. In short, the director said the truth is that LeBron ain't Michael. Well, no, LeBron isn't going to be Michael. Pitka, Pitka also nitpicked the film's depiction of portrayal of icon, uh, iconic animated star Bugs Bunny. Clearly, he didn't have much positive much positive to say about the sequel. In fairness to LeBron and A New Legacy, director Malcolm D. Lee, Pit Pitka's original film was also met with a harsh critical response. At the time of its release, many viewers didn't like Michael Jordan in the movie and adult audiences found it obnoxious. But Pitka's movie resonated with young fans who ultimately helped turn the movie into a classic. It's possible that Lee's and James's sequel could do the same. The post Old Space Jam director's comments on new movie going viral appeared first on The Spun. Oh, boy. And that's the end of that. Well, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Hey. Just like Siskel and Ebert um, slammed um, Independence Day, which I like. Oh, uh, let's see. L Lala said, thank you. That movie sucked. Well, I'm going to give it a shot probably sometime this weekend because now I have HBO Max again. And I got the fourteen ninety nine deal, so I'm going to um, take a look at it. And you see, let me put it this way: I am one of those people who likes to keep things as they are. You know, you got the old Thunderbirds, new Thunderbirds, the Shira from the eighties versus the Shira back in twenty sixteen, and I like them both. And the Thundercats, Thundercats, I like of Thundercats. Yeah, two versions of Thundercats, two versions of Voltron. I can enjoy them both. Okay, and you gotta I have remember, no with it. they aren't the same. No. See, that's but. one of the that's one of the problems I have. You know, people like the old school guys saying, "Oh no, we can't have this." Blah blah blah. It's like, come on, people. But times have changed. I, if and I right. may. Oh, go ahead. If I may, I have a counter argument to you, Shirley. Okay. Well, yes, I agree. You can enjoy both versions and appreciate them for what they are yeah just like i appreciate both the original og sailor moon and sailor moon crystal mm -hmm. okay i'm just i'm just using those as examples here i know i know my problem with space jam uh a new legacy is simply put um, from what I've seen of it, it's not consistent with the the feeling of the original. Most reboots and reimaginings aren't. But you see, to be the thing own. is, the thing is, Janet, for something like that, it's an iconic movie. Okay, was it the best movie in the world? 
Hell no. no. Mm -mm. But it was iconic because it brought together the Looney Tunes and real life characters in a in a period appropriate way. Mm -hmm. However, with this movie and all the CG that was done for the uh, for the tunes, I've looked at them and I'm not very proud of it. It doesn't look right, especially when you get the close-ups and you see all the fur. While yes, it's anatomically correct, it still doesn't look right for the Looney Tunes. That's yeah. my view. Yeah, it's just that well, well me. I think I think one of the things, you know, as much as I love seeing all the cameos by so many different characters, I personally think that's a distraction. Just think about it. I've heard Rick and Morty are in it. Uh, I've seen some of the Herculoids in it. I think at least one Thundercat is in there. The Iron Giant is in there. Godzilla's in there. It's like you have a whole slew full of, like, hundreds of different characters i feel like as much as that's great and all i feel like that could possibly be a huge distraction because that might be the only thing i end up being interested in in the movie uh, i could give you an anime example from back in the day in one of my movies they had a bill i won't go into detail but a building came a disco caved in on itself and if you looked at the crowd real close you could see classic anime characters mm-hmm in the crowd, watching the building collapse. So, sure. You know? Yeah. Uh, hey, can Lola! I, can I say my two cents on this? Say your two bucks! Go ahead! <laughs> first and foremost, the um, first and foremost, I already told one of my friends the movie's, the movie's gonna suck. And it did. But I have to agree with Frodo on this one the original space jam was totally iconic and plus bring in the animation with the humans yeah it's the same thing that happened with who framed roger rabbit mm -hmm. now with the old like you just said like the old thunderbirds with the new thunderbirds i love them both mm -hmm. sailor moon sailor moon crystal i love them both the original voltron and the new voltron absolutely love them And another thing, you know, I don't mind different versions of the same, like Voltron. Um, yeah. You know, I don't, Voltron. I don't usually they, mind they, them either. Finish. Yeah, let her finish. And as long as they stick to the original format. Mm hmm. You know, That's what's possible. That's right. exactly it. Possible. But you get right. these I agree with movie on that. reboots that's nowhere near the original. Yes, and I will give one perfect viewpoint on this one. The mass comic book, I think like 2012, 2013. Okay. I did not mind the fact they made Matt Tracker an African American. That part did not bother me. What turned me off was turning him into a juvenile delinquent. Well, I'm like, gonna bur well, I'm gonna burst everybody's bubble. There was um an update that my friend Chad gave uh -oh. me. I guess who's gonna be Guess who's going to be playing Tony Montana for the next Scarface movie? I'm almost ready to ask who. Uh, the actor who played Apollo Creed's son. Michael B. Jordan? Yes. That's actually not a bad choice. That Jordan's could, actually it, proven himself. Well, Jordan has proven himself. Mm -hmm. He also, as far as I remember, played Killmonger. Mm hmm He was Killmonger in the and Black Panther movie, right. And he also played uh, one of the Fantastic Four characters. That's right. He did in that... Um, Johnny Blaze. Yeah. In that, fail in that failed reboot when Straight Outta Compton beat that movie so badly. <laughs> yeah. And let's not forget for Straight Outta Compton, Ice Cube's son played him. Right. I remember that. It was, inter it was interesting. Uh, What's the matter, Janet? What? My Zoom video is not showing. I we can see you fine, though. I know, but I can't see any of you. Hmm, that's weird. 
Unless you change did the you... view. I was gonna say, did no, you? It's a white screen. What? Did you minimize zoom by any chance? Yes. Yes. That's what that happened. Will, Cause that will sometimes glitch zoom out for a yeah. few seconds. Mm -hmm. Pull it back up. Give it, give it a little bit, and and it should work just fine. Okay. Yeah. What I'm gonna do is just get out of the meeting and come back in again. Okay. Well. Okay. Like, well, most and foremost, I like enjoying, I enjoyed this topic, discussing movies, because I'm a movie buff. Right. I am a movie junkie. For example, Independence Day. I was about to see, well, I saw the premiere. Me, my mom, my aunt, we saw the premiere when it first came out. Everybody was talking about it. It just blew us away. The one thing that kind of blew my mother away is when the... Um, spaceship was in D.C. and she's like, now why do you have to come to my hometown and start trouble? Why y'all gotta do that? <laughs> she was like, oh my gosh, the Capitol, no! And I'm like, bye-bye D.C. She was like, but it's, 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 she was like, it's, it's a now good where were we? Oh, uh, Lala was talking about Independence Day. Yeah, the she movie. was like, my mom was like, really talking from the explosion. She was like, I hope it don't hit Maryland anytime soon. I said, Mom, I said, mm -hmm. we're in Bowie in Largo. We're about like um like an hour and a half away. The only thing that's gonna be in is like smoke and explosions. Where are we gonna go? Nowhere. Because half of the Marylanders have homes that don't have basements. <laughs> oh, Janet, tell, okay. tell 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 Lala about um you know, you 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 slept basically about Siskel and Ebert. Remember them? <laughs> oh yeah, Siskel, Gene Siskel, and Roger Ebert both slammed Independence Day. I never did, did forgive those two for doing that. Oh, Siskel and Ebert. Yeah, when when Independence Day came out, they really had doubts about the flick. But a lot of people, you know, sent them angry letters like, "How dare you on um, this Independence well, Day? Was very good and all that." Blah 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 blah. Well, you want to know something, though? I Critics are paid to be critical. Yeah. And I know that oh, they yeah. were just doing their job, but guess what? What? Uh, they buggered the crap out of me. Oh, yeah. Well, Probably did a lot yeah, of them. But, but then again... people who are movie buffs don't like Cisco and Ever, you know? Well, I'm not a movie buff, but I know what I like. Well, the thing is, sometimes, yeah. sometimes the critics can say this is a really bad movie, but then people go see the movies like, "This is a good movie." What were they talking about? Hey, uh, are, are we supposed to be discussing movies or, or the no, internet, the internet, social media, good, bad, and ugly? That's tomorrow. That's tomorrow, Janet. Time. Not today. <laughs> oh shit! That's right. It's fucking Wednesday. <laughs> God damn, I did it again. Tuesday, I thought, was Wednesday, and I told Shirley I had to get the garbage out. <laughs> but it was only Tuesday. <laughs> but I have to be honest with you guys. The, in, the first Independence Day was awesome. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Loved it. Loved like, it. Especially when Will Smith, he goes up to the alien and kicks the shit, and kicks the shit out of it. Oh, my that my favorite part, and I have to do this. I have to do this. It's my favorite part in the movie. You know, this is supposed to be my weekend off. But no, here I am carrying your heavy ass through the burning desert with your dreadlocks hanging out from the back of my parachute. <laughs> you have to come down here with an attitude, acting all big and bad. And what the heck is that smell? Yeah. Oh, one of the most touching parts I liked was when the old man, he launches up and he says something to the effect, screw you, and boom. Oh, he's like, hello, boys. Yes. I'm back. Mm -hmm. That was the best part of the movie because he showed them a thing or two. Yeah. But even if he Resur was a rush, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Independence Day Resurgence, I watched that twice. That 
was good. Yeah, and that then, was good. Put your headphones on, Frodo. They are on. I think he's just muted. Yeah, but anyway. Damn um, it, Josh, wake up. He's awake. Let's see. Um, I'll tell you this. There's one movie. This movie was panned quite a bit. Welcome to Marwin. The one with Steve Carell. Uh, I heard about that. I'll be that. back in yeah. a minute. I'm now, you see, a lot, of, a lot of people mic. basically panned it and everything. But I looked at it and said, I'm going to forget everything. I just know what it looks like. I feel like this is a rather unique perspective on PTSD. Post-traumatic post -traumatic stress, stress disorder. Right. Yeah, post-traumatic stress right. disorder. Right, because, because he had been attacked, lost a lot of his memory. Okay, go ahead. Um, he, uh, and of course, he started you know, taking all these photos and everything, using the dolls and everything to basically create a town. Which basically, you know, it was, a, I mean, I, for the way I saw it, I thought it was a pretty good movie. It was, you know, it was unusual. I liked it. A lot of people panned it, but I didn't. I thought it was a good movie. And I'm glad that they did because it really brought up a topic that nobody don't want to discuss. Yeah, because, you know, and the fact and the fact that the guy I did not realize he had a fetish of wearing women's shoes, but that wasn't the that, that wasn't the point. <laughs> but the one that totally got me and this movie still boggles my mind when they remade Joker. Oh yeah. When they remade Joker and he had, I forgot what type of disorder he had, but everybody was making fun of him and then mm -hmm. he went nuts. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um, wow. Anyway, um, I'll tell you this. There's a story, there's a story I had posted last week. Um... No, actually, it was a couple of days ago. This, this, this is gonna make you mad, Lala. What if I told you this? There was like a baseball and softball tournament going on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. it's all it was for boys and girls. When the boys won, they got trophies and medals. The girls got gift bags. Wait, what? Yeah. Girls got gift bags instead of trophies and medals okay that's just that's just a excuse me but that's just a bunch of bull yeah i know but it's real unfortunately oh, so oh. let me let me put the link everywhere yeah i'm put it in zoom i'm gonna put it in okay i think frodo's eating all right uh let's... sorry about that that's all right yeah, probably didn't want to hear. They probably did not want to hear you chewing. <laughs> All right, and then what's the last one? Right. Uh, excuse me. Right here. There we go. Okay. Well, here's another topic that nobody didn't know. Did you know a tornado hit New Jersey last week? No. Never knew about oh, it. Yeah, yeah. Tornado hit New Jersey and hit the National Mall in Washington D.C. Yeah, there's a look it up. Google tornado National Mall. Ooh. I mean, it hit. I was asleep and I didn't even know, but they said the tornado ran through downtown to the National Mall and it caught everybody off guard. Ooh. All right. So anyway, let me get to this right here. Um, yeah, this was this was posted. I posted this I think last week. Uh, after boys get trophies, girls get gift bags for state championship wins. A Florida mom is demanding justice for her daughter's softball team. So, a girls' softball league in Florida made a call that left its players in tears. Now the story is gaining national attention after one mom posted about it on Facebook. My daughter, along with 11 other 5- to 7-year-old talented and determined little girls, have dedicated their entire summer to Babe Ruth All-Stars, Ashley Parton wrote last month. They practice three days a week for two months for hours every day. 
Uh, the team went undefeated all season and won the state championships. But unlike the boys' division champions, the girls did not take home personalized trophies. Instead, they were each presented with a black drawstring goodie bag, which contained a commemorative softball, a plastic luggage tag, and adult-sized batting gloves. Wow. Really? Now... Parton's seven-year-old daughter, Faith, was confused. Some children were in tears, and this was before they even learned about the discrepancy between the boys and girls. Faith asked me, where's my trophy? And I totally lied to her. I said, oh, it's coming, Parton told today, parents. I assumed there had been a mistake. All right, uh, let's scroll down here. But it was no mistake. In a statement given to a local Fox affiliate, Florida Bay Ruth State Softball Commissioner Doug Robinson explained in part, Our intention was to provide the players with the recognition they deserve and a lasting keepsake of the tournament. Yeah, like a gift bag's going to do it. I don't think so. Uh, let's see. Faith and her teammates aren't satisfied with the keepsakes, and neither is Oviedo Babe Ruth President Jim Brashear. Brashear and the Oviedo Babe Ruth Board of Directors will honor the softball players with the proper championship trophies, on Friday, this was last Friday, at a special award ceremony. Shh, the trophies are a surprise. Oops. We recognize the Florida Bay Ruth directors feel the alternative award had similar dollar values to trophies, Brashear told today parents. However, they simply were not what was expected and left the girls disappointed. This was the first year that softball players received goodie bags instead of trophies. Really? I believe they tried something different with awards, Brashear said. However, it was a swing and a miss, and whether intentional or accidental... It was not, it was not, it's not a message Oviedo Babe Ruth at a community level felt we could support. The Babe Ruth League and Commissioner Robinson did not reply to an email for comment. Parton is also waiting for a response. I just want them to write me back and say, hey, we need to do better. We need to do better, Parton said. I want them to take a moment to thoughtfully think about this and how they want to make sure the girls are treated equally on every level. As for Parton's daughter, Faith, she's counting the other days until Friday. I'm extremely happy that all these people are going to celebrate us. Most of all, I'm so grateful. This is going to be so fun. Now, there is an update. I've got to find it because I'm trying to remember where I think I remember where it was. Let's now, see. One, now, since you're fun, well, keep finding the update. I want to get my two cents on this. Go ahead. Now, giving the boys the trophies and giving the girls giddy bags I'm going to be honest with you, and Frodo maybe can disagree, agree or disagree on this. I'm sorry, that is dis... Um, what's that word I'm looking for? Discrimination. Thank you. That is discrimination. How can you give the boys the trophy and a medal, and you're not giving the girls none? All you're giving them is goodie bags. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. No, I think after this backlash, there's going to be a whole lot of changes. Yeah. There's going to be a whole lot of changes. Okay, I found it. Okay. I found the story. I found it. It's over at a Mighty Girl on its um, Facebook page. But let's see. Um, all right. Uh, not only did the – all right. Friday celebration. Not only did the young state champions finally receive trophies, they were also honored with a parade through their hometown led by the fire and police departments and two college women's softball teams came out to meet the girls. And most importantly, as Barton wrote on Facebook, they were also part of making elastic change. We got change! Babe Ruth Softball finally reached out with an apology and plan to make a public one next week. They've also promised to immediately make changes and to build a standard nationally for awards moving forward for all boys and girls. We've officially changed the future of softball for all girls at Florida Babe Ruth Softball and Babe Ruth League moving forward. And that's all we wanted. Well, that is good. At least changes have been made. Yep. It's like, really? <laughs> I think it was, I have to be honest, the first time giving them goody bags was stupid on their part. Yeah. It's like, what? The girls, the girls work their butts off just as much as the boys, and this is what you give them? Come on! Exactly. What do you want them to, what do you want them to do? Go on their knees and beg? They work too hard for, they work too hard for their craft. Yep, exactly. They work just... too hard for their craft. Yeah, they yeah they work hard, and it's like, giddy bags and gift bags? No. <laughs> it's almost like, 
It's almost like if if we were playing a uh, cornhole or something, you know, they had like men's cornhole, women's cornhole. Men, you know, the men's champion, I get this big shiny trophy. The women's champion gets like a gift bag. <laughs> what was in the gift bag is the one question. Well, for the girls, um, the girls' gift bag. Let me go back. Uh, it contained. It contained. Hold on, let me go back and find it. Um. A commemorative softball, a plastic luggage, 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 luggage tag, and adult-sized batting gloves. That's it. So okay. I would have been a, I would have been a p old mom if that was my daughter playing in a softball game. Mm-hmm. And the boys got trophies, you know, personalized trophies, medals, and such. It's like, wait, something's not right here. Discrimination, kind of... I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. <sighs> uh. Sorry it took so long to finish eating, but... No, it's okay. You gotta You're eat. You're fine, Frodo. Yeah. But, sir, but honestly, I mean, come on. It's 2021. <laughs> and think about this. That show American Ninja Warrior, right? They have the same course for men and... And, and women. women. There are me, no changes. There are show. yeah. There are no changes at all, which I think is a good thing. Hey, Lashana. Well, yeah. You should you should do that show. What Ninja Warrior? Yeah. <laughs> I I'm gonna be honest with you. I I to be honest, a lot of people say you should try them. Like no. Like what? I'm not that type of that. I'm not that good of an athlete. Plus, with me and my size, uh, uh, and I'm an asthmatic. Nope, no can do. I would. If I you. fall in that water, and I fall in that water, and that wind hits me, uh, uh, nope. Y'all yeah. can do it, but not me. I sure couldn't do it. I still think back to when Stephen Amell did it. <laughs> I wonder if Janet would be game for it. No, she probably wouldn't. <laughs> but, but um, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I've been watching Ninja Warrior when G4. Yeah, was still, that was still cool. exist. That when was Women cool. and Ninja Warrior came out, and I forgot that pink-haired um, on Japanese um, athlete's name, but she won. Yep. She won the entire Women Ninja Warrior. Yep. Oh, I know it. Ayako Miyake. That's what her name is. Ayako uh, Miyake. Yeah, I miss those days because I love watching Ninja Warrior on that. All right, wish... Shirley. Yes. I got a little bit of uh, interesting news that I know is going to make you facepalm. Okay. Oh, Texas Lord. Senate passes a bill dropping teaching requirements for history of racism. The Republican-controlled Texas Senate just passed ah. a bill to eliminate a requirement that public schools teach that the Ku Klux Klan is, quote, morally wrong. The same bill prevents studying Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech as a curriculum requirement, as well as the Voting Rights Act and the 15th, 19th, and 26th Civil Rights Amendments. Oh, brother. See, that, this is why I left the party. I'll never go back. I'll never be a Republican again. I'm sorry. I'm just, um, just going to be honest with, it, with you, and I'm not into politics. I'm telling you, Republicans have lost their freaking minds. Yeah, and I, mean, I, I heard this, and it's like, you're stupid. I heard Lindsey Graham say, this is the party of Donald Trump. If you don't think it is, you're in for a rude awakening. It's like, excuse me, it's the party of Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> and honestly, the fact that he, he said that makes me actually question his sanity. Because, you know, at one point, I might... I was a Republican, and you know what? I I left the party myself because screw that shit. Yeah. I I'll tell you the truth, Lala. I left I left the Republicans for good, 
when the insurrection was going on. Oh gosh, you you know what I I'm gonna commend you and Frodo for this because a lot of my friends who went to school with me and used to go to college with me, they have switched from R to Blue after they stormed the capital. Yeah. After that, they 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 switched. I mean, switched, like that. I switched several years ago, but here's the thing. My reasons for switching were more in line with my religious beliefs. Mm-hmm. See, my religious beliefs state that everyone is equal. Everyone has right. Had, everyone should have the same rights as anyone else. Mm-hmm. That means surely should have the same rights as I have. Mm-hmm. Get paid the same as I do. Have the same right to love whoever as I do. Mm-hmm. I don't care. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I believe in complete equality. No more wage gap. No more none of that bullshit. Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> but my thing is, I I believe in that. I really do. And when I was listening to the Republicans back in the day, they were like, oh, gay marriage is bad. And I'm like, wait, what? You're telling me love is bad? Because that's essentially what I took it as. Gay marriage is bad. Love is bad. And I'm like, no. (laughs) And it was at that moment I dropped the R and put on the D and said, screw (laughs) y'all. Well, me, I took down the R. I'm in the I. (laughs) And that's fine. Mm-hmm. But as John would say, I'm a moderate leaning de- uh, liberal, and this is why. Mm-hmm. I personally, I think that men have no right whatsoever to dictate what goes on with a woman's reproductive system. Mm-hmm. That means that that means that none of these laws that restrict. Abortion should even be legal. They should be ran through with women who actually have, oh, I don't know, been raped. Yeah. Okay. Hey, you know, hey, you know my law here in Alabama. They don't even get, they don't even give exceptions for rape and incest. But yeah, continuing on, I also said, you know, why should, why should a man have any right to dictate what goes on with a woman? Why yeah. should um, why should government have any right to be in anyone's fucking doctor's office? Mm-hmm. And why should anyone have a right? And um, well, Shauna, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna chuck you under the bus for a minute, not because you are, but because hypotheticals. So I apologize in advance. None taken. But let's just say, Lashana. Was in love with, oh, I don't know, Katy Perry. And they wanted to get together and be a family. Who gives a shit? Who fucking gives a shit? Mm-hmm. Am I wrong? No. Nope. You're 100%. You're 100% correct. I gotta agree with you. When I have to be honest, when, um, when the gay rights was most was like really taboo back in the day, and now people now are embracing it and accepting it. I remember back in the day they didn't they didn't care about it. They were like banning it left and right in many different states. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's true. And I remember that very well because half of my friends who went to school with me were gay. Uh, and and here's the thing, like I said, what what re- right is it of the government to be a in our bedrooms, b in our doctor's offices, or c anywhere else really that matters, mm-hmm. okay? Or in our pocketbooks, okay? That's where I stand, and. Honestly, I'm so sick and tired of people claiming 
Oh, but we do it for the common good. No. It's not common good to force a girl who's like 14 years old who just got raped by her daddy because her daddy couldn't keep his dick to himself to have to go through all the traumas of childbirth. It's not right. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry... I'm sorry, Twitch, if you think that was offensive, but it's a point that I'm trying to make. That's fine. I don't. I don't think they're gonna say anything on this. <laughs> and I'll, I'm gonna give you an example of um, somebody doing the right thing. Uh, we just had a special election for City Council District One because the man who had served he died back in March, so they had a special election, and one person came very, very close to getting that 50% to win outright. He had 49.5%. The number two person had 21%. However, the number two person said, I'm going to drop out because I, we don't need to waste the money on another runoff, you know, having people have to come out and such. So I'm just going to go ahead and let him take the seat, you know, and go ahead and get started. And he's been sworn in tonight, so... So I think I personally I think that's a great call because he he just I mean he just did not want to waste the money, the resources in people's time having to go vote again. And I like that. Mm -hmm. I wish a lot more uh, public servants would do shit like that. Yeah, because he he realized he realized you know the, his that the that the number one guy came so close to getting the fifty percent, and he's thinking. Do we really want to waste the resources and the money and the time with another runoff? So he decided. I think he did the right thing. He decided to drop out and let the and let the number one guy just go ahead get the seat. I feel like good on him. You know this this brings up a point that I kind of want to touch on. It's been six months and one day since the inauguration. Mm hmm. Okay, six months and one day. And the entire time, what's been a constant? What's been a constant thing, a thorn in everyone's side? Um, I didn't lose the election. I won bigly. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, da, da, da. You know who? <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, Trump, but this is pointed at you. And if you listen, maybe take this into onto account and maybe take my words to heart because I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm just trying to be truthful. You lost. You oh. crying up you crying like it like a baby isn't gonna change the election. Mm -mm. You got fucking trounced. Yeah. Now do everyone a fucking favor. You said and I quote if I lose this election against Biden, I will disappear from public life. Yep, he did say that. You have violated your word when you always say, oh, I'm going to, I'm a man of my word. I'm a man. No, you're not. Mm -mm. But since you're violating your word, you're also violating in many ways a contract you made with the U.S. Uh, citizens. Mm-hmm. Do us all a favor, shut your fucking mouth, move to fucking Greenland for all I care, and leave American politics alone. Your influence is no longer wanted, it's no longer needed, and in fact, your influence in the political system has been nothing short of of an unmitigated disaster since the minute you decided to run for president. Mm -hmm. And that ain't a lie. No. Well, I'll, uh, I'm gonna mix, let's switch this up a bit. I know everybody's not into WWE like I am, but I'm just gonna put this out there. Big, um, Biggie Langston just won the money in the bank. Oh, wow. I know. I watched it. I was happy about it. Yeah, and John Cena. Oh God, John Cena returns. Mm -hmm. I'm I've just gonna be hearing, honest. I've I'm just gonna be honest. Hearing, John Cena so, just needs to just. Oof. I 
I'm going to say something. And these are some rumors that are going around, and I want to see what your opinion is. There's some rumors going around that uh, CM Punk may join AEW. Hmm. Yo, I have not heard that yet, but if he does, that's going to be a huge mistake in WWE's part, because I'm going to tell you why. When CM Punk was trying to get his voice across, Vince mainly did everything he could to shut him up and screwed him. Also, so, I have to be, so I'm going to be honest with you. If he does go to AEW, it's going to change a lot of people's perspective because a lot of people who love WWE chanting CM Punk, CM Punk all the time when they find out if he does go, I'm sorry to say this, WWE is going to go down the toilet. Did I miss something? Yeah. Oh, we're just <laughs> talking about a few things. Um, And there's also a second rumor. This one hasn't been verified yet, mm-hmm. but Brian Danielson is being said that he has signed a contract with All Elite. Oh, I hadn't heard that yet, but I'm I'm just going to say this. This is just my opinion only. If he does join, like I said, a whole lot of these wrestling shows is going to go down to crapper, I'm telling you. You know AE, who I mean by AE, Brian Danielson, right? Yeah, AE, AEW is kicking butt. I'm telling you. Plus they, don't have name, P, plus, they don't have that PG on. Hold on one second. My okay. wife doesn't know, and I'm going to explain. Brian Danielson has a nickname called the American Dragon, and he was formerly a WWE superstar who won the uh, world title, I think, three times in WWE. D. Bry. Yeah, not Daniel Bryan. Oh, that's Daniel? Yeah. So you think he's going to switch over, huh? That's what rumors are saying right now. That he has signed the contract and he is going. I'm just going to say this. This is only my opinion. If he does go, I'm telling you, a lot of the WWE fans will be switching over to AEW. Plus, Sting used to be in WWE. Now he's in the AEW. And plus, here's the thing. AEW don't have that PG stuck to him. That's true. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm letting you know, because I'm letting you know now, the um PG, the um the PG thing is killing WWE. It's killing them. I'm not a big fan of wrestling, but maybe the WWE was geared towards appealing to the young set. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Well, oh. that's what that's what the uh, PG was meant for was because they wanted it to be more kid friendly. The problem is. When you're going full kid friendly like that, you lose the interest of fans who have been around for years. Yeah, that's true. Well, exactly. I, I started off with wrestling. Well, I'm not a big fan of it, but my first exposure to wrestling like that was WWF with Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant. The yes, old school. Um, Janet, I agree with you with Coco Beware, the Tonka, the Bushwhackers. <laughs> I love the Bushwhackers, even uh, though great, they uh, were a uh, little What was order. the one, Grave Digger? Yes, Grave Digger, yeah. And Lex, and Lex Luger. Mm-hmm. Undertaker. Which, uh, Undertaker. Yeah, Undertaker, too. Those are the ones I remember. All of this mishmash of wrestlers they have now, I lost. Mm-hmm. Well, I have to be honest with you, um, for me as a wrestling fan, and I grew up on wrestling ever since like the 80s, mm-hmm. I have to be honest, the favorite wrestlers that I've enjoyed a lot was mainly, like I said, Hulk Hogan, Tatanka, Bushwhackers, Kobo, Coco Beware, Lex Luger, Sergeant Slaughter, and... um, The Godfather. 
yeah, Ricky, the Dragon Steamboat, all of them. And now, like, the younger, the new generations, like Alexa Bliss, Oscar, um, Kobe like- Kingston, Re- Kobe Alexa, Kingston, Randy Orton. I like. Now, Alexa Bliss, I have to be honest, when she first started, you know, she was all, you know, the face and, you know, kiddish, and people didn't like that. But when she went heel, it started her career. And now, honestly, with her acting as uh, what she does now with the whole theme storyline, it works. It does. It really does. Plus the whole Harley Quinn um, thing. The one that surprises me when, um, if Frodo, if you um, can agree with me on this, when Braid Wyatt came back, and then when they brought that big box out, and Alexa Bliss appeared with that black stuff all over her face. That was fun. <laughs> and then Randy Five. got him with when Randy got him with the RKO. I mean, that was like like Alexa was turning on him. And then which shocked me, and I can't believe that they aired this on TV. She was sitting in a circle. With the star in the middle. Hmm. Anyway, Damn, continuing on. <laughs> but That's yeah, I, me. I like it. But yeah, anyway, do you have anything else, sure? Um, not really. By the way, Joker. Yes. Oh, don't be it. Oh. <laughs> Where did oh, you go? Uh, I was talking with Ash about a few things. Oh. Just had some stuff that she needed 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 to vent out with, so I let her vent. Ah, what she's happened? Good. She's good. And she's good. She just has a lot of stuff on her mind. And I listened. Okay, that's for really legit. That's good enough. Yeah. All 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 is well, right, Ash? She said yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're always welcome to come on. Oh, yeah. I wanted to get to this story about a woman, a 70-year-old woman punched by a teenage Walmart employee. Wait, what? All right. Yeah. This happened last week. So let me put this, because I saw this like, you've got to be kidding me. There are some sick, sick people in the world. So let me put that in there. Put that in Discord. And don't worry, Mike, all the links will be there tonight. Okay. At least I hope. Let's see. Michael's yeah. going to jail. Okay, now let me see. Uh there's one more place. Yeah, sorry, I'm still getting used to this. <laughs> Michael go to jail. No, go to jail. Right. Go directly to jail. No, do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. <laughs> Next time you come over, I'm gonna have James come up back with that game we played. All right. So this one happened. This was back on the fifteenth, and this is out of Mount Pleasant, Wisconsin. A seventy-year-old woman says she was really punched in the face by a Walmart employee after the two had a verbal argument. She says no one tried to help her and is now encouraging anyone who witnesses a similar incident to step in. Police responded to a Walmart location in Mount Pleasant, Wisconsin around 7 p.m. July 7th for reports of a 70-year-old woman who was punched multiple times in the head by a 17-year-old cashier. The victim, P.K. Shader, sustained injuries to the head and face but did not require immediate medical attention. She says this kind of behavior from employees is unacceptable. It has been, it has, it has been quite a journey. Why would anyone do that? I don't know. And why no one helped is even more, especially in a Walmart store, Shader said. Well, I know how about how Walmart doesn't like to help people anyway. Let's see. Uh, both the employee, identified as Jazaria Velasquez and Shader, indicated the argument arose over a verbal argument. According to the criminal complaint, Shader asked to speak to a manager after having a negative interaction with Velasquez. She also attempted to take a picture of the employee to report her. She went crazy. She flew, and she punched me, fist right here in the face, over and over again, Shader said. I'm never walking into a Walmart again, that's for sure. Velasquez was arrested and later charged with aggravated battery to an elderly person and disorderly conduct. 
Shader says what took her by surprise the most was that no one stepped in to help her during the incident, even though employees apparently knew of Velasquez's temperament. What if it was your grandmother? What if it was your mother? The manager knew she was a loose cannon. The first manager said nothing. The second one told me, so? So, why do they keep an employee like that? That's a bigger problem than not having security, Shader said. As she recovers, Shader wants the people to know that if they ever see an incident like this, to step in and help in what, whatever way you can. I just want to tell people, pull out your phone, give, someone a, give somebody a break. No one's asking you to dive in and be hurt, but pull out your phone and document and yell, call the police. Shader plans on filing a restraining order against Velasquez. She and her attorney are exploring other options to send a message and make sure this never happens to anyone else. Walmart released the following statement on the incident. We want all of our customers to have a pleasant shopping experience in our stores. The associate involved has been suspended, probably terminated, and we can turn you to assist law enforcement in the ongoing investigation. And that's the end of that story. Well, you want to know something? Mm. That gal could um, be that employee should be charged with battery upon the elderly. Mm -hmm. There is some sort of law where you do assault the elderly. Yeah, elder abuse. Yeah. Well, here's something interesting, guys. U.S. women's soccer team and other squads kneel in protest before Olympic matches. Well, the thing is, I know that I think when it's time for the actual Olympics, which starts in less than two days, they're not going to be able to do that. Well, well I'm going to be what? honest with you. I am not going to be the one to watch the Olympics. I used to, but well, not anymore. Well, here's the thing. One big, one big problem. Uh, they're not going to allow any fans in the stands at all. Because it's guess what? That dead. Delta that Delta variant is um, causing problems. Because I know some athletes and a couple coaches have already tested positive. And the opening. All right, I'm gonna let you guys go for now. You guys okay. finish off. Okay. All right. Ciao. Later. See you tomorrow, Frodo. All right. Anyway, um, I one thing I've already found out: the opening ceremony will not be a flashy splash and dash thing like they've done all the time. Just because of the COVID-19 pandemic, they're going to make it subdued. So, as much as I would have loved to have seen Super Mario Brothers, Pac-Man, and, you know, all the other Japanese stuff that that makes it great and all, it's not going to happen. Because, you know, basically, this pandemic has ruined everything. Yeah. I still say that with this Delta variant, they bought back the Olympics too soon. Well, the problem, I agree. Well, were... yeah, there's one little problem with that, though. Guess what's coming in 2022? The what? Winter Olympics. Well, hopefully oh, no. we'll be over oh, the um, no, no. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got to disagree with that. They got to cancel that. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Hold on no. Now. Why? Hold on. Now. Why? No. Because, number one, they're going to be putting more people, more athletes at risk. Exactly. La, 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 I agree with you. Okay. The Winter Olympics is when, Shirley? Winter Olympics will be Friday, February 4th through Sunday, February 20th, 2022 in Beijing. Okay. Yeah. Cancel. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. Wait a yeah. minute. Okay. Yeah, because number one, they're going to be putting too much on athletes at risk. Even that, even the coaches and the staff. Yeah, and that's already honest, happened. That's yeah, already happened. I, they need to wait. I think they need to wait until this whole thing, you know, comes the to an end. Over. And, and comes well, to an end. Part of the problem with that is the pandemic may never actually be over per se, but. They can get it under control where everybody can at least be able to go out, be able to celebrate with family and friends again. Because, you know, this Delta variant is running rampant, and unfortunately, it's it's now being reported in all 50 states. And I know Alabama's had a huge surge in the last couple of weeks. So, But they need, because I've, I'm, what's better for, I would say, for a whole lot of people, I know a whole lot of people have got their vaccinations. 
I should say still wear your mask and gloves. It's 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 safer that way. Yeah. But at least and you know, at least it's an option. You know, you don't I mean, you don't I mean if you don't want to, if you're fully vaccinated, you don't have to. I'm gonna tell you the truth. I haven't gotten it yet because I admit I'm nervous. I'm scared. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you, Shirley. I know you're scared. I was scared too. Um I took it because mainly I'm just gonna be honest with both of y'all. My mom had COVID nineteen. She had to be hospitalized for that. She had to be hospitalized for that. Then she went and got her shot. She went and got both of her shots, and I went and got mine. I'm telling you, Shirley, you won't feel a thing, but I should say in the next two days, your arm will be sore. I believe I'm just that. letting you know that right now. Your okay. arms will be sore. That's fine. Your arm will, yeah, yeah, your arm the, will be sore. You see, the last time I had a, you see, I'm not an anti-vaxxer by any means. It's just that, you know, I've, the reason why I'm a little nervous is because I feel like it's come awfully fast for starters. Now, like I said, that's that just me. Wow. Can I say something really, really quick? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you something really quick. Uh, and, and I don't want to scare you. Trust me, I don't. But do you have like a pre-existing condition? I have type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure. I don't think that should affect it. Mm -hmm. But my mom, who has arthritis, took the Johnson and and Johnson shot. The single shot. Two days. It flared up bad. Mm -hmm. Really bad. And, and, And the worst thing was, is she was doing physical therapy and was doing really, really well. Ooh. Like she was able to walk on on the treadmill for ten minutes without stopping. Two days after that shot, blown all to hell. Ooh. My suggestion for you is, Shirley, if you are if you're thinking about getting the COVID shot, I would suggest the visor or the, the Pfizer. I'm doing. Yeah, I'm, I'm I would, doing. I'm I would recommend do Pfizer. that. I'm probably do Pfizer because I, I, I have heard that. I've heard too many problems with the Johnson and Johnson one. Um, yeah. I, now, I, now uh, I'm gonna give you another reason why I'm a little nervous. Um, one of my coworkers, well, she's now left. She's working closer to her home. Um, she 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 said her husband had gotten the first shot. Now I do not know which one it was, but he had a terrible reaction to it. So. I would suggest the visor one because that's what me and my mom got. Yeah, I heard. I, I've I've been looking between the two. I think Pfizer is going to be the one. It's going to be my pick. Yeah, the visor. The visor works. On um, the visor worked for me, but the only thing that the flaw with me was my arm on my left side was sore. I mean, it was so sore. I I took a towel on and I went to sleep. I was out of it. Yeah, that's what I heard. Uh, you need to take some kind of like medicine. Problem is with the high blood pressure, it's not exactly safe for me to take Tylenol. So, but you know, I mean, I do want to take it. It's just I'm a little nervous. That, Everybody like I, said, I mean, I have to be honest with you, Shirley. You're not the only one. Yeah. A whole lot of people around the world are nervous to take that shot. Right. They because, are, and yeah, they're see, scared, and yeah. I can understand if they're scared. Right, because, you know, it's not, it's not, I'm not saying don't do the vaccine. Because, like, if you're vaccinated, more power to you, okay? I'm telling you, I'm not an anti-vaxxer, except probably on myself. But the last time I got a, the last time I got a vaccine was the Tdap back in 2016 by my doctor. Mm-hmm. So what? Tdap. It's like tetanus, diphtheria, and two others. I forgot what they were, but oh, the tet the tetanus shot. Yeah. But um, you know, I mean, now as a result, I ended up feeling a little bit dehydrated. Drank a lot of water that weekend, and I was really Not really that tired. You don't drink a lot of water to begin with. You drink a ton of water anyway. Yeah, but I feel like I had to drink more water. <laughs> I think it's because of the medicine that she took. Yeah. Because it will lower the water. It'll lower the water in your body because mm-hmm. it's fighting off all those um those bad um infectious stuff in the blood. Right. And in the water. So that's why 
if you feel like you're dehydrated, my suggestion to you, get like a iced bottle of water. Like take a bottle of water, put it in the freezer, fill it like to a half. And then when you get it out of the freezer, put more water in it. And it's, um, you'll have your ice water. That's what mom and I do. Yeah. Well, but yeah, here, you got to yeah. drink tons of water. Yeah. The only thing for me is I'm not a fan of ice water. I like mine at room temperature. <laughs> Well, I like room temperature water plus ice water either way. Mm -hmm. But if people can't drink ice water, they can drink all oh, crystal light that comes in a pack. Yeah, or I do Propel. Mm -hmm. I love Propel. It's always been good to me. Particularly lemon and peach. <laughs> Mine's is great. But, um, but you know, I, I mean, like I said, I, I want to do this. You know, like I said, I'm scared, but it's not because... Not because of anti-vaccine. I'm just, you know, thinking, what get, what if I have these crazy side effects? What if something happens to me? But it's like, if I wanted, if I don't want to keep wearing a mask all the freaking time. But then again, you know, with this Delta variant, I'm probably gonna have to vaccinate or not anyway. Yep. So, because <laughs> I know I think Los Angeles County has already put the mask mandate back into business. Yes, they did. Everybody got to be wearing masks in um, a lot in um, in uh, mainly the state of Cali. Uh -huh. Yep, yep. You got to wear masks. Yep. But of course, the governor of California is facing a recall election in September. So. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, that's happening. Unfortunately, but um. But like I said, I do want to get I do want to get vaccinated. But the only problem is I've got a doctor support. Let me ask this question: If I get if I were to get vaccinated this weekend, would it affect me going to my to a doctor's appointment on Tuesday? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't so. think so. I don't know okay, why. But you can let that you can let your doctor know that you um uh, took the COVID shot and show him the um card vaccination that you got. card, right? And he could put it on file. Okay. Yeah, cause yeah, cause I I I I'm thinking about it. It's just I don't know because I'm st I'm still on the I'm still on the fence. I know I shouldn't be at this point, but well, given my situation, still being treated for breast cancer. Yeah, right. You had to do. I it. didn't hesitate to take the shots. Right. I did not fine. hesitate. That's fine. You know, you, I think you did the right thing for yourself, and that's okay. You know, some people, they um, don't have a choice. Right. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. My mom has been a nurse for over 40 years. After she uh, was positive for the COVID, I have to be honest with you. It wasn't cool. It wasn't cool for her. I had to spoon feed her. Yeah. Then I said, oh, that's it. I said, Mom, that's it. You're going. You're going to the hospital. We're we're getting you nine one one because this is not helping. Yeah. So luckily, we luckily, thanks to the doctors and nurses that helped my mother, she fully recovered. And when she went back to work, that's when they gave her the shot. And I said, Mom, since you're doing it, I'm gonna go ahead and do mine. Mm -hmm. And I have to be honest, it was it was quick and it was fast and. The people were there from Greenbelt. I have to be honest; they were all military. Yeah, because I know I know they had like military style, like mobile, like the mobile setups here in Alabama, anyway. Especially to reach out to the rural areas that you know they can't get access to, like a clinic in the like in a bigger city or something. You know what I mean? Right, because up on um, the Greenbelt um, metro station. I went to get my shot. I mean, it was real quick, real fast. I mean, after you get the shot, you have to wait for like 15 minutes. Hmm. Same here. Yeah. Let's make sure you didn't get any preliminary side effects. Right. Uh, yeah, I saw, I seen that at the Simon Sam's Club too. So you got to sit for 15 minutes. After your 15 minutes is up, you can leave. Mm -hmm. I got to be honest with you. After my 15 minutes was up, I got up. And as soon as, you know, I caught the bus home, my arm, man, oh, my arm was so sore. Even when 
I have to be honest, my aunt looked at me, she's like, you okay? I said, I just want to take a Tylenol and I'm going to bed. She's mm-hmm. like, don't you want to eat? I'm like, uh-uh, I'm too sore. Good night. All right. Well, my oh, arm was sore. On. I will admit it. My arm was sore. Mm-hmm. But it only lasted me a couple of days. For me, it was two before the right arm. It was not sore at all. It was just on my left arm that was sore. Was that the arm you got your shot in? Yeah, the first shot was my left. The second okay. one was my right. Oh, okay. Well, they do different now arms. I didn't know that. Arm, yeah, for your left arm, you're going to be sore for like two days. Mm-hmm. But your right arm, it won't be so bad. It will be slightly sore, but not a lot. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I think this is a good point to end the show because it is 10-10 after all. <laughs> And it's eleven ten on your end, Lala. So, anyway, um, plan basically for tomorrow and Friday. Tomorrow, of course, is our toss up Thursday, which is attention to one. We're doing social media: the good, the bad, and the ugly. And then on Friday, we're gonna do Shell Shock Live for our game night game. So, you know, hope you can join us for both nights. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the ten second ending right now. <laughs> I'm holding blue right now, and you can hear him snort, so. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. All right, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and say love, peace, and chicken grease. Everybody have a great night. Sleep well. Stay safe. And we'll see you tomorrow for Toss-Up Thursday. Good night, everybody. Good night, guys. Good night, everyone.